Hey guys, Mike here from Drum Lessons Carlo and I'm doing a, a lesson video on film noir. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It sounds very French, uh, but it's thanks to our good friend Mr. Mike Osborne and uh, it is a grade four piece in the new uh, Trinity syllabus. Is it rock and pop? No, straight drum kit, straight nightmare. <laughs> um, grade four group A, film noir. Um, there's a couple of reasons why this one took me a while, um, but most of them are excuses. It's a tough piece, um, and, and and it just took a while. You know, it took a bit of uh, coming back to it. Um, it bet me for a little minute because I didn't like it, and it's hard to invest the time required on a piece that you don't love. Like the one before this was, I think just as hard, Helpless by Ham from Hamilton. And I just love Hamilton. So getting a, getting to play a piece from Hamilton was was uh, great. And it was a tough piece, but I loved it. Um, now there's, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with this piece. It's, it's a good drum piece. And now that I can play it, I like it again. And that happens quite a bit to me, that uh, there's, a, there's a hate for pieces in the middle because they best me. I'm not able to do them straight away. Um, so it's it's a jazz rock piece, 115 BPM. It's a piece that's challenging. It's a jump to play it with the backing track. Um, so let's just let's just start it. It starts off with two and a half bars of intro. What that means is you're counting one, two, three, four, one, two before you play your flam kick, flam kick, three and four and. Um, da, 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 da. And you're in straight with a crash. Um, one and two and the three and four. And. Now, those offbeat snares are ghosted. I've got little m mutes on my on my kit for for the talking uh, lesson part, but I have recorded a playthrough of this without any mutes on it. If you want to listen to the piece, um, and you can use. YouTube settings for to slow down the speed on it to 75% speed um, and play through it that way that could be very beneficial to you so um, those are ghost notes now if you don't know ghost notes and you haven't worked ghost notes the best advice I can give you is not to not to worry about the volume of the ghost notes more so worry about the height of the stick for the ghost notes so on my normal hit on two one and two my stick is normal and then on my and a tree e and I want my stick low so so I'm only allowing my stick up to normal playing height for my normal notes and my ghost notes I'm training myself to keep that stick low so I can hear an audible difference between my ghost notes and my um, full volume notes and they're not accents they're just full volume just normal notes Okay, um, so let's play this opening line. Um, three and four and one, two and three and four and 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 and, 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 and one. Okay, a couple of things to unpack here. First of all, on I don't know what I'd call it. Would I call it bar two? Because there was a half bar. I call it bar two. The one with open hi hats and the ands. That might need working on its own. One, and two, three, and four. And don't be afraid to take it out. Give yourself a count of time in between each time you try and play it. Take it as slow as you need to and count it out loud. One, and two, and three, and four, and. And then the the reset bar, the one in between, isn't because you're wrecked after playing one bar super slow. It's to give your mind a chance to think about any possible mistakes you made, any out of times you might have done, any problems, and to reset. If you try and play it every single bar, one after the other, you don't have a chance to think about what you need to adjust, and mistakes will pile up on each other and it'll frustrate you. So those gap bars are important. But get comfortable with that. Mostly because the left foot might not be that strong for you, so you want to give it a chance to get used to that pattern. One, two, three, to call it hard, a little misleading, because physically you're not doing anything hard, but 
it's strange and it's new and the only way you can take the strangeness and the newness away from it is to drill it quite a bit okay um then bar three one two three four and then how do you count this one so the semi quavers will be three e and a but they're not all semi quavers the semi quavers three e and a you can count that whatever way you want you can count your triplet tri triple it you can count it and that uh, like I did uh, but you have to remember that the rhythm on this is three e and uh, four and three e and uh, four and now the sticking on this is quite important because you'll end up backwards with your play if you don't do a double right for right handed drummers and double left so second rack tom three e Ignore your accents just for a second. Two, three, e and a four, and one, two, three, e and a four, and one, two, three, e and a four. And okay, so once you're able to do it, do it with the full bar. One, <laughs> there's no bass drum on one. One, and two, and three, e and a four, and one, and two, and three. And a four and once you're able to play it and you're comfortable with it and it doesn't catch you out, um, it starts to flow a little bit. You want to get that accent in on the three and four and three, four and nice one um, and it's a fill you'll use outside of film noir you'll use that fill because it's nice um, okay so uh, that is the intro we start on then section a bar five one. okay so a little bit of a breakdown here as well uh, from bar five pretty straightforward one Ghost, ghost, four, and. We're not used to putting the snare on the and of four, so watch out for that. Make sure you're not putting it on the four by accident. One, and two, three, and four, and. Manageable. One, two, and a three, and a four, and. And a. Bass, bass. Watch for that. That flows really well when you get it. And two. And a three E and a four and and two a three E and a four and and two and a three E and a four and take note of the fact that I'm I'm focusing on the hard bars the, the potentially hard bars and I'm just doing them as an exercise on their own like honestly if you sit down to practice and bar, f bar 7 has been bothering you and you get bar 7 in the bag by the end of your practice that's progress and that's exactly all, all you wanted to achieve in your practice so don't feel like playing this piece wrong in the same places over and over again and making no adjustments is a, is a, a better s use of your time than sitting down and working on bar 7 and getting it right it's, it's not a waste of a full practice to stick on bar 7 and get it right um, and then uh, bar eight, one, two, same fill we had, three, e, a, and a, four, and. Uh, back to bar five with the repeat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and two, and three, and four, and. So on my repeat, I don't play eight number one I play eight number two which is the next bar and it's bracketed and it's shown with two over it so um, that should be clear enough to under repeat that that's the one you play with the three and four and got another repeat to bring us back to bar five one two three four one two three four one two three four one two this is uh, 
8 number 3, it's bracketed, it's got a tree over it, it's the one that's next, so we repeat section A three times. On the first time we play 8-1, the second time we play 8-2, the third time we play 8-3. So um, if that was a little bit confusing to you, that's what it's supposed to be, and um, they're supposed to repeat three times. And uh, you might not have seen um, a repeat happening three times like that before, so that's that's something that they can do. That then brings us down to bar 11. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. The, f the last bar there, bar 14, might be a bit challenging for you. But everything else we've seen before, um, it's it's a hark back to the, to the first and second bar. Um, and you have that offbeat open hi-hat thing there as well. If you spend enough time on bar 2, then you should float through bar 12 because it's the same bar. Um, okay, that brings us into the B section. So this B section shouldn't be overly um, challenging for you. Um, watch out for the bell to ride. Um, you could probably drill this as a 4 bar section as opposed to individual bars. 1 and 2 and and. Make sure that that last crash, the second one, is on the E, it's not on the AND. They're not 3 AND 4 AND. It's 3 AND 4 Up to 19. 1 AND 2 AND 3 AND 4 AND 1 AND 2 AND 3 E AND 4 AND a 1 AND 2 AND 3 1 2 AND 3 AND 4 Now what? was catching me out on that last bar, which is bar 22, I was coming in with the bass drum on the AND instead of on the 2. So I was going 1 AND 2 AND 3 AND 4 AND and I, I wasn't even copping that I was playing it wrong. Um, and then when I noticed that I had the mistake, it took me ages to get it right. So, make sure you're leaving a whole beat rest on 1. 1, 2 AND 3 AND 4 Okay, so that's 19 to 22. Let's play that again. I love this section, it's not that tricky. Let's talk about it. So you you're coming out of bar twenty-two. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and one hit on each drum, snare, rack, second rack floor. And then one <laughs> that's one. Flam on the rack, four and one. Flam on the second rack, and two and three. Two more bass drums, and four and. Tied into the next bar, one, two, three, four, one, two. Flam kick, flam kick. DS Alcoda, if you know your, your notation, go back to sign and play on code. B DS is this sign, back to sign. Alcoda, and in little brackets, with repeats, because sometimes when you, when you uh, get a DS Alcoda, the repeats are ignored, but they don't want the repeats ignored this time. We're, that brings us back into section A, which we've run through already, so I'll just play it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, And that brings us to bar 11. One, two, three, four. Straight over, we've got a two coded end. That brings us straight over to a fill bar in 27. Boom, boom, boom. Whatever you want to do there. Don't go crazy. Don't take it outside the style of the piece. Just keep it simple. 
you got another bar in 28. Another fill. You stay on the snare, you can move it around, you can do whatever you want. And our final bar, one and two and three. Nice and sharp. That wasn't the note, but I'm not a whatever instrument that was person. Okay, so, um, thanks for watching. That's the playthrough of uh, Film Noir. Uh, there may have been mistakes. I don't know, man. I'm just doing my best here. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did my best. If you liked it, uh, thank you. Um, I've got a, a, what have I got? Buy me a coffee thing. Uh, where if you appreciate the the, um, the videos that I put up, uh, you can buy me a coffee if you so wish. Um, it would be nice to um, get a coffee bought for me and I will buy myself a coffee with it. So um, at least the first one. Uh, so be the first one to buy me a coffee. Hey. Um, but no, if, uh, if you don't want to buy me a coffee or you can't buy me a coffee, that's cool. Um, I would appreciate if you um, subscribe to the channel turned on notifications and, and, and such. Uh, not that it's gonna make a world of difference to me. This isn't a real YouTube channel. This is just a place to, drum, uh, to, to drop videos uh, for drum lessons. It's very niche. I mean, no one's watching this is not trying to learn film noir. So if you watch this far, I do appreciate um, the, the support you guys give me. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, pop them in the comment section, I'll reply mm. to them. Um, any feedback, uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, and yeah, what's the next one? The next one is going to be uh, Algo Latino by Clark Tracy. Okay, I haven't listened to it. Um, it looks kind of cool. Latin. Anyway, that's the piece. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.